Good morning. I hope you're all well. It's cold, so I'm going to make this little intro quick today and uh, over the next few days I will be doing some exploring vintage shops here in Montreal. Vintage, secondhand and thrift if I can find them. I've had some amazing recommendations from some of you who have told me about where to shop and things like that. So I thought I would share some of my finds and discoveries with you, even though I'm on a no buy. Uh, I'm going to test my willpower, I'll still try some things on. If you like this kind of content that talks about creativity instead of consumption or slow fashion, secondhand shopping, uh, hit subscribe. And you can also find me on IG, I'll leave it here on the screen, and in my live workshops where we have two guests and we shop their closets, and it's a wonderful live event that really helps you understand how to get more out of your closet without shopping. And this time we're doing a little holiday special, so it'll help you figure out holiday looks without having to buy anything new. So I'll leave all the info for tickets in the description box below. Uh, let's do some secondhand shopping. All of the shops in today's video are very curated. Some of them are even consignment. So if you'd like to see more of a thrift kind of video, then let me know. I'm happy to do a part two and go into the more like friperie and true thrift stores that haven't been curated. These first few are all in a part of town called Mile End. I'll put the names and the addresses in the description box so you can find these stores really easily. But this one is called Annex Vintage and I just loved the curation. It really resonated with my own style vibe. The items had great functionality and a little bit of interesting detail, but they all were really effortless. This was one of the first items that I tried on. I'm a sucker for knits, even though I have plenty at home. I just think in Canada, I'm always cold. I love trying them on. This color scheme was exactly perfect for my closet, that cream and a beautiful tan. I just loved that detailed edging around the cuffs and the collar. All of my navy sweaters at home are light or mid-weight, so it was really nice to try on something with a heavier texture and weight and a little bit of beautiful detail. I loved the high neck, it was such a great effortless fit, and this store had a really nice menswear selection as well. They also have a nice size range. Of course, with secondhand and vintage, all the sizes do vary, but they do try to go up to a double XL and plus sizes. This sweater, oh, this was like a coup de foudre. I had a couple of them this day. It's such a great sweater. It was 100% wool, made in the UK, and it actually reminded me of my time in the UK. All of the young boys were wearing sweaters just like this, with the elbow patches and the little epaulettes. Oh, I just loved it. I left all of these at the store. I don't know how, but anyway, just love this one. Now onto the skirts, which I definitely don't need, but they had such a beautiful selection, I wanted to try them. This is a gorgeous suede midi skirt that fits like a glove. In fact, probably too much like a glove. It was very small and I couldn't bend over, but it looks fabulous in the photos, so I wanted to show you, as well as just that beautiful detailing that makes it fit so well. You really don't see this kind of craftsmanship anymore. I also loved this skirt, that gorgeous rich color, the pleating that added a little bit of shape and detail. It also had pockets, which is amazing. And I loved how the buttons were slightly off center. I just think this is such a magnificent piece of work and I'm so glad stores like this are giving it new life and that someone is gonna take this home and love it to death. I just know it. The price point here and in the other boutiques in today's video are all higher than thrift prices and I'm totally fine paying these higher prices because someone clearly did a lot of searching to find gorgeous pieces like these and restore them so that they are in brand new condition. This gorgeously curated and beautifully decorated store is called Seconde. It was actually recommended by a few of you, so thank you for that recommendation. 
Everything in this store has an underlying sense of elegance. So it's actually made up of three secondhand and vintage vendors, but it's very clear they all have a similar aesthetic. So even though there are some eccentric details in certain items, they all have a very elegant feel and overarching classic sensibility. Ugh, this sweater stole my heart, as you can see. I loved it because of the color scheme, but also the versatility. The fact that it's part bomber, part cardigan, part blazer, it's just fantastic. So I loved it. My husband actually purchased this as a Christmas gift, so it's hidden now. I have no idea where it is. Does that count as failing the low buy? Mm, you tell me. I have a lot more thoughts on a no buy, actually, at the end of the video. This was another coup de foudre sweater, like a heartstruck sweater. I thought the neckline was especially interesting, and I love that it was warm and cozy, but still felt very sexy, which in the winter months can be a really great find. I thought showing the clavicles was really beautiful, and I couldn't find a tag, but the hand feel was just wonderful. I didn't go home with this sweater, but I'm seriously still thinking about it. I might give the store a call and pay for it over the phone. Not Far is a little boutique called Ruse, and it is full of solid designer consignment pieces. It's small, but it's got a great men's section, and they do have a nice range of varying sizes. They don't have a dedicated plus size section, most secondhand stores don't, but they do have a good range. The other piece that I loved about Ruse is that the staff was super nice and friendly. This Acne Studios blazer, I loved it. I've been dying to try them on because the cut and fabric is truly superior. A lot of people rave about these blazers online and I wanted to see if they lived up to the hype. And I have to say, they really, really do. I think it's a very timeless cut, especially if you like something oversized. But what really, really struck me was the quality of the fabric and how that made the structure and drape really beautiful. I really noticed the difference in quality actually when I tried on this blazer, which is still beautiful. It's double-breasted just like the Acne Studios blazer, but I noticed that because it doesn't have the same weight, it didn't fall the same way and feel as rich. Other little design details like having more buttons and a shorter lapel also made it look a little bit different. I didn't go home with either of these, obviously, but I'm really glad I tried them both on. Moving now into the Plateau neighborhood, which is where I currently am, this store is called La Caravane, and I thought it was beautiful. This store had a really great rock and roll kind of country vibe, and yet all of the pieces didn't feel too costumey. They were very timeless and classic, and I think super wearable. This little boutique is called Citizen Vintage. They have a really nice collection of curated vintage items, but they also feature local artists and they have their own line of upcycled items or they're made from dead stock fabric. All of the vintage pieces have a lot of personality. There's a great focus on like 90s and Y2K and then their own pieces are very bright and cheerful and the service is fantastic also. I tried some of their upcycled jeans, and I have to say I really loved the fit. The waistline was perfect, but they changed them so that it allowed a little bit more room in the hips and thighs, and my thighs are the most generous part of my body, so I really appreciated this extra space. I didn't take these home, I'm not a fan of acid wash, I don't need another pair of jeans, but they were fun to try on. I also found these velvet boot cut pants, I love the low slung hip, they've got a great pocket. I thought the pricing in this store was really fair. The jeans were priced at $120 and they had been reworked, and these pants came in at under 50 
The last stop on our little tour today is Ava B. As you can see from what's hanging in the store, a lot of these garments have a lot of personality and can definitely be pinpointed to a certain point in time and a certain style personality as well. So a lot of these items I would probably pair with very contemporary or basic items in my closet. They also have a really great men's section, which is where I found this great men's uh, button-up shirt. Of course, I didn't take it home. I don't need another one of these. I also wanted to try this blazer because I'm into the idea of getting a boxier cut, no collar blazer, and I wanted to try this on. I love the way it looks with very contemporary and basic pieces, and a lot of the items in this store have those beautiful touches that give so much life to a garment. All right, I am back home. That was a fun series of days, and what a test. Whose idea was it to do a no-buy while I am at one of the most fashionable and stylish cities in Canada? This whole experience uh, affirmed a couple of things for me. Number one, I am human. I make mistakes. Although I don't know if this was a mistake, because this was a really good learning. Which brings me to point number two that I am much better at achieving goals and small behavioral changes that are positive when I do things in moderation. I even mentioned it in one of my videos about slow fashion and how to make sustainable shopping habits. I favor and truly believe that smaller progress is a lot more long-lasting than drastic things like challenging myself to a no-buy for several months while I'm in a very cool city where the offerings are abundant. While I was in these stores, I was focusing solely on the fact that I couldn't shop and that I was on a no-buy challenge and I was gonna have to be really strict with myself, which completely took away from the normal narrative that I tell myself when I go into stores, which is, I love my closet. I love all my clothes in there. I don't actually need anything, so let me just enjoy and see if I find anything that's on my list or something that is really beautiful that I know I'll get a lot of wear out of. Those two different mindsets really showed me why I prefer moderation instead of embarking on a really hardcore challenge like a no-buy. For some people, a no-buy challenge might be really, really good and beneficial, but this just proved that I should really listen to myself <laughs> and that what I've been saying all along works best for me. So technically, I went home with one sweater today, my Christmas gift, which uh, has already disappeared. I'll probably get it on Christmas Day or during the holidays, but like I said, I'm still thinking about that blue sweater and I'm not going to beat myself up if I do purchase it. This does not mean that I will completely abandon my no-buy challenge. I think it's still a really good learning, like what I learned when I was in the store and how I could compare the two different mindsets that I had going on. I certainly believe in progress instead of perfection. This does not mean I'm going to abandon my no-buy initiative. I'm definitely going to go in with a mandate of not making any new purchases. I think it's good to have in the back of my mind and probably good for some more self-reflection. So I hope you're not disappointed. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope to also see you in my live Shop Your Closet event on December 4th. It is the last one for 2021. It'll have a festive theme if you like that kind of thing. I'd love to see you there. Uh, and if not, I'll see you in the next slow fashion video. Give this one a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and I will be back with another slow fashion video. Thank you so, so much for watching and have a wonderful week ahead. Ciao!